part two of my depth first search recursive backtracker maze generation demonstration algorithm thing. Here we are. So all I did so far, this is what I'm trying to build. This thing that's going to take some time and eventually generate this beautiful, uh, uh, hopefully it will be beautiful, although mine won't be so beautiful. You'll take my code and make something more beautiful. But I'm going to show you how to make this maze generation thing. Now, just to recap, all we have so far is just this grid. So I have this grid, and in the code, I have cell objects. Each cell knows where it is, what's its column, what's its row, and it knows whether to draw its walls. Top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. And it has a Boolean variable to keep track of which walls are currently active in there. So we need to now go and look at that Wikipedia page where the algorithm is described. So I'm going to go over here and look at this. This is the algorithm working, recursive backtracker. So the whole backtracking aspect, that's going to be in part three. But we're going to do the forward tracking aspect. So the first thing here is that make the initial cell the current cell and mark it as visited. OK, so this is a really key concept. What's going to happen here is that the program is going to start on a given cell. And it's going to start walking around the cells and just deciding whether or not it should remove a wall or keep the wall there. Now, as it walks around the cells, it should never go back and visit a cell that it's already been at. So we need a variable to keep track of whether a cell has been visited or not. So if I come back over here, that's the very first thing I want to add, is I want to add another variable here that says this.visited equals false. So each cell should uh, not be visited. So the first is starts as having not been visited. <laughs> sorry. Now, uh, sorry, in, in the main part of the program, what I want now also to have is I'm going to have a variable called current. So this variable current is the current cell. This is the cell that is currently being visited. And in setup, we could just have it be current equals grid index 0. So I'm going to start the current cell just at 0 in the top left. It could be anywhere. It could start in the middle. It could start at the bottom right. This has to do with where you want your maze to begin and end. But for now, I'm not really going to worry about it so much. Starting at grid index 0 will be just fine. And then in draw, the very first thing I'm going to do is say current.visited equals true. Now, I think there would be something useful here to do. For example, what I, I just to be able to see be best, it would also be really useful for debugging. And remember, I kept this in here, is that we could have, <laughs> let me put some spaces here, if the cell has been visited, let's change its color a little bit so that we can sort of see what's going on. So I'm going to say, uh, if this.visited, uh, draw a rectangle. <laughs> I'm going to get good at this someday. Draw a rectangle with uh, so much. I want to turn off that autocomplete in between this video and the next one. Um, make it uh, a nice like purplish color with a little bit of alpha. So what we'll see here, if I run this again, oh, that's the wrong one here, is we can see this cell has been visited. Just that first cell is now kind of a purplish color. OK, so now we've got a structure for knowing if a cell has been visited. And we're also, debugging-wise, can see if it's been visited by highlighting it, which will help us as we try to figure out if the program's working or not. So let's now go and look at the algorithm and what's next. While there are unvisited cells, OK, so as long as there are unvisited cells, so we know that we're going to be finished when all the cells have been visited. We'll worry about that later. If the current cell has any neighbors which have not been visited, OK, this is probably going to be a pretty complicated piece. We need to figure out, does the current cell have any neighbors which have not been visited? So let's figure out how we're going to do that. I'm going to go back to my code, which is over here, um, and come back. And what I want to do is say something like current.check neighbors. Whoa, how did it know that's what I was going to type? That's crazy. That is insane. <laughs> it's like predicting the future. It's got some kind of like deep learning, machine learning magic. I wasn't even using this editor earlier. I did type something earlier today that said check neighbors. I don't know what's going on. Some sort of magic. OK, uh, maybe I opened up a different example already. Whatever. The point is, I want to write a function that's called check neighbors. <laughs> so I'm going to add that function. This dot check neighbors, now it should know, is a function. So how do I check the neighbors? OK, let's think about this. <laughs> First of all, I don't have, I'm in a real place and there could be neighbors outside. Neighbors are people that are to the right, the left. 
in front of me, et cetera. Let's look at how that works over here. So much like we were talking about in the previous video, the top, right, bottom, and left walls, now if I have a cell, there are four neighbors. If this cell is at i comma j, this is i plus 1 comma j, this is i minus 1 comma j, this is i comma j minus 1, and this is i comma j plus 1, right? y goes up by 1, down by 1. i goes up by 1, down by 1. So this is what we want to check, check the neighbors. We need to know are any of these neighbors visited or unvisited? Okay. So let's start doing that. I'm going to come back over here and say something like, so I'm going to make an array called neighbors, and I'm going to say um, right equals grid. And now this is where it would be nice if I was using a two-dimensional array. And you know what? I want to start with top. Remember? Top, right, bottom, left. This is how I'm always going to track everything. So the top is grid. It, you know, you would sort of think of it as like this. Right? If I had a two-dimensional array, I would say I sit j minus 1. That's the cell above me. <laughs> right? But I don't have a two-dimensional array. I have a one-dimensional array. There is a magic formula. The magic formula to get an index into a one-dimensional array where everything 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, the, the, where everything is ordered going across rows, but I want to think of the column and row coordinate, is as follows. Index equals i plus j times the number of columns. I will link to a separate video where, about pixels where I go through this algorithm specifically if you haven't seen it before, but for now you can sort of trust me that that works. So what I'm really saying here is this. I'm saying I want this particular right neighbor, and oh, that's not the right neighbor, that's the top neighbor, right? I want to check is that top neighbor visited or not. Now, because I'm going to need this formula so many times in this program, I'm going to write a function and I'm going to call it index. An index gets an i and a j and just returns i plus j times the number of columns. So I can actually just do this. I don't need this code here. I could say the top neighbor is index i j minus 1. The right neighbor is i plus 1j. You know what? I'm going to live dangerously today, and I'm not going to fix all the formatting here. I'll fix it after the fact when I post the code. It'll be all nicely indented and spaced the way I like it. Um, but I'll fix a few things. <laughs> right uh, bottom, I can't help it. I'm doing it anyway. Uh, index bottom is ij plus 1, and then left is grid uh, i minus 1 j, what, j, uh, I'm, I'm losing my mind here, i minus 1 uh, j, right? Because the, the y is the same. Okay, so these are the neighbors, top, right, bottom, left. Now, first of all, have they been visited? If top has been visited, If top has not been visited, then I want to add top to uh, I want to add top to that array. Neighbors dot push top. Now I should really probably condense that. Right now I'm doing something that I do often, which is like I'm just writing things out very explicitly. I know there's only four neighbors, and I can just like have these four neighbors and then duplicate this code four times. I could easily do it differently and kind of like figure out a nice way of um, uh, a nice way of like condensing this code, but I, I'm going to just sort of live with being happy with this because I'm just going to do this four times and do if bottom has not been visited, put it in. If uh, right has not been visited, put it in. And if left has not been visited, put it in. And you know what? <laughs> I want to keep the same order even though it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, it does. It might matter. Top, right, bottom, left. Top, right, bottom, left. So I want to build an array of things that have not been visited yet. But I also have a little bit of an issue I need to deal with. It's really unfortunate. I wish I didn't have this problem. But what if I'm over here? I only have three neighbors. There's no neighbor to over here. And I could do something fancy where if you go over here, you could come on that side. But I don't want to do that. So I also need to figure out to make sure 
my, uh, the, the neighbor that I'm looking for is not negative one or past the width. So I need to deal with that. Oh, I wish I didn't have to. Life would be so much nicer if we didn't have these edge cases. By the way, that's why you call edge case, because it's actually on the edge. It's an edge case. I've been doing something different for it. I don't know if I ever thought about that before, but you know. Um, so one way I can deal with that is I think, um, uh, I, I, I'm gonna do it over here. This is a little bit weird, but I'm gonna say uh, if I, because it's invalid, I, I, I want an invalid index if I or J is less than, right, if I is less than zero or J is less than zero or I is greater than the number of columns, minus one, or j is greater than the number of rows, minus one. All of these are invalid index values, right? i has to be between zero and columns minus one. j has to be between zero and rows minus one. And then I'll just return a negative one. So I'm gonna get a totally invalid index, otherwise I want the correct index. And then down here, do you know, if it gets negative one, do you know what's gonna happen here? Top is gonna be undefined or right is gonna be undefined, or bottom is gonna be undefined. So you know what I can just do? As long as top is a real thing and it hasn't been visited, then it can go into the array. As long as right is a real thing and it hasn't been visited, as long as bottom is a real thing and it hasn't been visited, and as long as left is a real thing and it hasn't been visited. Boy, this check neighbors function is a lot to do, but we're kind of like, we're really like practically there now. What we have figured out now is, are there neighbors that haven't been visited? If so, select randomly one of those. So now what I want to do is if neighbors is dot length is greater than zero, let's pick a random neighbor. So I need a random value between zero and the length of that array. array. And then I'm gonna say return that random neighbor, otherwise, uh, what? Return, let's just return undefined. It probably would return undefined anyway if it doesn't return a neighbor, but I'm gonna explicitly say undefined. So this is what we're doing. We are in a cell, that's the current cell, we're looking at all its neighbors, we're finding any that haven't been visited, and then we're going to visit that one. So let's go back to this, the main sort of part of the sketch, and what I'm going to do here is say neighbor equals current check neighbor. So this function should check the neighbors, find a random unvisited one, and return it. And I'm going to say if neighbor is not undefined, right, then what? Neighbor, and you know what? I'm not going to call this neighbor. I'm going to call this next because this is really the next cell. Current, the next cell is one of the available neighbors. As long as neighbor is not defined, now, next is not defined. Now, next has been visited. And current should be next, right? So this is like what we're doing. We're marching through. So let's just look at this. If I run this now, I probably made a mistake. So check neighbors is not, current dot check neighbors is not a function. So let's see, what did I miss? Current check neighbors. This check neighbor, I spelled neighbors wrong, okay. So now let's run this again. Look at that. So you can see, and now let's, let's reduce the frame rate so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna say frame rate uh, just at uh, five frames per second. So you can see here it's marching along and eventually it's gonna get to a spot and there's no more available neighbors. So we're doing pretty well and actually this is gonna be the end of this part because we got to a good part. We got the part of the algorithm where we're marching along to find neighbors until we get to a spot where there's no neighbors anymore. Now, I haven't been removing the walls. That's gonna, removing the walls, I'm gonna do in the next part. <laughs> but this is pretty good. I can hit refresh again, and we can see it's gonna do this differently every time, but you can see it's gonna get stuck pretty fast. So the next thing I need to do and, uh, is in the algorithm is actually start removing the walls so that we're carving out this maze, so to speak. Okay, see you in the next video.